Hello, welcome to the AI Buzz, where we talk about the latest trends in AI. I'm Josh Starmer, host of the YouTube channel StackQuest with Josh Starmer, and a lead AI educator at Lightning AI. <laughs> and I am Luca Antiga, CTO at Lightning AI. So, Luca, last time we had our very first episode and we got some interesting comments. The big question is, are we overselling these techniques? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, yes and no, right? Um, there, I, I see both sides of the coin. One side of the coin is that uh, the moment you refer to these techniques as being thinking about stuff or, uh, you know, reasoning, then you have expectations that go from, oh, computers are stupid, they can do two plus two equals four, and everything you know that you can instruct them to do but nothing else, to, oh my God, now uh, they're human level. Uh, but you know, but at the and, same time, and now we're at, gonna have Skynet. Yeah, exactly, right. So the and I, yeah. you, you can see you you go uh, even like uh, big proponents of different AI approaches are saying, oh yeah, these things are just bubbling out nonsense, and oh look at this like quiz, uh, it fails, and I can tell you, yeah, probably mm -hmm. you know a lot of people that I know. <laughs> would not get it right the first time, you know, and uh, this is, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Sam is the brother of the uncle of the mother or so somebody. And so yeah, 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 it would yeah, take exactly. a bit of reasoning to go through there. Right. No, um, but jokes aside, yeah. I, I would say that, um, something has clearly changed and it hasn't changed yes. over, overnight. So we, we've talked about ChatGPT with enthusiastic notes, but we're not here about to talk about you know OpenAI or ChatGPT. They've been you know, doing groundbreaking things as long as as well as many others. Um, maybe for the first time in history, we have seen, or I have seen, uh, at least experienced people that are not in AI, they're not even in science, they are using uh, ChatGPT for things. So and a, a big model, let's say, a big model for yeah. things. Uh, I was talking yeah. to a guy who was in, a, a, in HR and he said, yeah, it's, it's nice because I can scan through many, uh, many CVs. And then, of course, he would like review them, but he can have like a summarization uh, really easy and, you know, to create a blurb about each candidate. He will then check, but he's having a great time doing that. Right. So they're naturally interacting with it. And so yeah, yeah. I think we're at the cusp where you know, people are starting to notice the value add. Yeah. And this hasn't happened before. There were like in the, uh, it was AI for AI people or AI for scientists that knew yes. they got into AI. But now for the first time, we have something that we, you can talk to and instruct them to do something for you in a way that is very yeah. direct. It's not mediated by a product. You're interacting directly with yeah. a product. For example, like, you know, Google Maps so, or Apple Maps, right, yeah. was uh, uh, powered by some sort of uh, uh, machine learning models for traffic and so on. So we've, we are used to interact with ML models, but they're always mediated by a software. Right now, that's where yeah. we've been exposed to the raw, more or less raw, and we'll talk about that in this episode, model. Yeah, and we're seeing humans interact with it and extract value beyond what the model was created for, which is, I think, yeah. the, more or less the first time. A, a big thing for me, so uh, for me, y you know, when you do a Google search or I do a Google search, I I don't, I don't know if this is the way it is for you, Luca, but for me, I feel like I have to sort of think in Google, right? I mm -hmm. I can't just type in whatever I want and find what I need. I have to like carefully craft my search criteria, you know, and make sure I'm excluding certain terms because I know that's just going to bring up a bunch of bunch of garbage. Or, I, or if I can come up with the most specific terminology ever, you know, it, it's like doing a Google search. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that it's second <laughs> nature, and I don't think yeah. about it. But, but there's a lot of there. I mean, I mean, and this sounds crazy, but it's true. There are a lot of people that actually don't know how to make an effective query for Google, mm -hmm. right? And they end up with just pages of garbage. And one thing that's fascinating about ChatGPT and these and these types of tools is that for the first time ever, 
I, I can actually sw- switch off and it actually feels weird. Like with well, the first <laughs> time I used chat GPT, I, I was still using sort of like Google query yeah. style, you know, where I, you know, I, it wasn't natural language. I was just focusing on specific terms that I thought were going to give me. And I was like, no, I don't have to do it that way. I don't have to think a different way just to get what I want out of a, out of search or a query. And so what I wrote was, uh, you know, give me an outline for a book about deep learning because yep. I want to write a book about deep learning. Um, and it gave me a fantastic outline. I mean, it was, it was, it was like, oh, that's actually the book I want to write. You know, I, I now have to draw pictures of Stat Squatch and my normal Saurus <laughs> and come up with examples and fill in the gaps. But it was like, it, I, I didn't have to go like, I don't know. It was just, the way the way the query was so natural, and I, I feel like what you were saying earlier, not to not to dominate the conversation, but what you were saying earlier about how this this is a big change because all of a sudden it's not just going to be AI for AI people; it's going to be yep. AI for everyone because everyone's going to be like, "Oh, this is actually easier than using Google." Um, this kind, you know, just talking in a very natural way, um, you know. I think it's transformative because like even with Surrey, yeah. like if I try to do anything with Surrey, I feel like I have to talk in a very specific word order and I, and I can't just, I can't say please. And I can't say what <laughs> I would normally say if I was talking to a person. Uh, and that's and then for the first time in my life, that's, that's going to, that feels like it's, we're changing on that and it's becoming yeah. more natural and more fluent. Yeah, yeah. 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 And if you think about the fact that, um, you know, this kind of models, I mean, GPT or what powers ChatGPT is not the only model that is trained at that scale. Um, but there, there are other possibilities for people to create systems that will behave like uh, ChatGPT in the future. So the way I see it is not, mm-hmm. I, I've been having these conversations about, oh, now, you know, OpenAI would dominate and, you know, they've done it. Nobody else is uh, going to be able to do it. Um, but I, I want to kind of take some time here to kind of dissect what a system like that is um, is made of. Okay. And yeah. so that we can yeah. uh, go through a bit of the pieces. There are many, like, uh, many documents online that describe it, but I think mm-hmm. it's maybe easier to just talk about that. Um, there are yeah. a few ways in which you can build a system like this. and um, okay. But they're... they're more or less, uh, they follow today. Nowadays, they follow the same sequence. Um, so ChatGPT okay. is not the only one. There's one from Anthropic that is coming out. There will be many others. So you start with, well, yeah. a big load of data. Um, and okay. when, when it's text data, it's a few tens of terabytes. So it's not unreasonable, yeah. right? And uh, It's not and, unreasonable. Uh, Where does it come from? Uh, there are many... Mm, different data sets that are pulled together for mm-hmm. ChatGPT or GPT-3, in fact, um, the which is kind of the basis uh, for ChatGPT. Uh, then was mm-hmm. that uplo- updated at some point, but uh, essentially it's uh, scraped data, uh, book data, uh, code, okay. and, and in many okay. languages as well. There are a few open data sets that you can actually have access to. Um, one other okay. uh, data set that has been uh, used uh, in, the, in building open source alternatives to GPT-3, like um, GPT-NeoX or GPT-J by uh, Euler AI, for example, uh, use the pile. It's called the pile. And again, okay. it's, a, it's a big data set of, of text that has been scraped and uh, curated. Uh-huh. Um, it's okay. uh, like 800 gigabytes. So it's a bit smaller than okay. the totality of the data set that GPT has been trained on. But we're kind of reaching that mm-hmm. state, right? So we can easily yeah. imagine that humanity as a whole will kind of assemble the data uh, that will be uh, uh, needed. But that's not the only thing that is needed. And um, so... Okay. With this, you can take a simple computing model that we uh, touched based on the last time, which is, in this case, it's GPT. Um, it's a transformer model that uh, can be expressed in not a lot of Python lines. Um, 
Uh, and then, of course, to make it scale up to many hundreds GPUs and so on, uh, then you need a lot of like engineering on top of that. But this is something we will tackle in yeah. some future episode. Uh, the again, the whole AI field is uh, evolving in a direction where it won't be so hard uh, to write this kind of system. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah. so the part, the first part of the recipe is pre-training, which is uh, and usually usually this is done by masking words, and say, okay, you have okay. this one terabyte or ten, thirty, forty terabytes of text. I'm gonna feed you with sentences, and then I'm gonna mask the next sentence um, for okay. uh, or in a sentence. So I'm gonna present you with just one word, two words, and then I'm masking the third, uh, three words, I'm masking the fourth. This is uh, it's called ca causal masking. Uh, and I'm okay. gonna ask you to, to, to guess the next word. Um, and this is what makes GPT what it is. Uh, so, uh, okay. and all the other alternatives, um, and we touched based, uh, the last time how this like very simple pre-training modality will allow you to kind of go and, uh, uh, put a piece of a sentence and have the model complete that sentence in ways that are creative, yeah, yeah. but they they take into account right. what came before. Yeah. Um, and this is the, the first step. The second step is if I want something that I want to have a conversation with, I need that not to complete my questions, but I need it to answer. So in, in, uh, by providing um, the model, the raw model, uh, with pairs of questions and, and answers, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I can fine tune it. So maybe with a, yes. with a data set of a few tens of thousands pairs, so not a lot of them, I can condition okay. the model uh, to, to do supervised, uh, in a supervised way to, uh, to produce answer when, when they're posed a question. And so in, so in, are, in a certain those, way, yeah, go ahead. Are those question answer pairs? Are those, um, are those human curated? Are those created, um, by people or are they, these are usually those human curated, curated, but they are extracted. Okay. But I think in the future, we'll, maybe we can touch upon this. Um, I think it's very reasonable to assume that they can be produced by a different model or the same model. Uh, and okay. uh, the, the, the important point is that they, are, they come in pairs so that the continuation, mm -hmm. since these models are used to complete things, they are uh, biased mm -hmm. to complete something that looks like a question with something that looks like an answer. So the task is kind of similar, right? Okay. Generating text after yeah. uh, a prompt. But then th this text is conditioned to look like an answer to the previous question more and more. Um, yeah, yeah. And this phase is just the beginning of uh, a, a process that will then improve the, the model using something that has been around for a while, which is called reinforcement learning. Mm -hmm. And in reinforcement learning, uh, instead of thinking about a model that is, uh, I'll make it super synthetic, but instead of like having okay. a model that produces a classification, for example, uh, you're training something called the policy, which is a, a probability, okay. so a model that outputs a probability distribution of taking an action um, so that you can then sample the action from this probability distribution, for example. Uh, you could say that mm -hmm. um, I'm going. To, I'm, I'm driving. I'm going to go left or right. And at this point, given what my um, uh, observed environment does, uh, is um, I'm I'm going to go left with a 70% probability. And then I'm going to sample that probability. I'm going to make the action. It could be like what I'm sampling will be more more likely left oh, than see. right, but that's okay. And then yeah. based on the action I took. Um, I could have yeah. a certain outcome that translates into a number that is given to me. And the sequence of act, the sequences of actions, and so uh, uh, hence the probability distributions that are presented to me to take those actions will, will result in a, something called the reward, which is the price I get, okay. the numerical price I get. So the sequence of actions will 
accumulate uh, uh, the, in, in, a, in an es- something called an episode. And my job is to take okay. the, to uh, find out what the probabilities are uh, in such a way that mm-hmm. I will make my episode give me the best reward according by sampling okay. the actions from this probability distribution. Uh, and this is something that has been used to like program uh, agents that like play in games, for example. Uh, a mm-hmm. few years ago, mm-hmm. I participated to a project where uh, uh, we, uh, with the company um, I originally founded a few years ago, uh, we kind of, uh, uh, co-developed the AI that went into Model GP19, uh, the the game, the actual, the official game. It's an old game, so oh, wow. <laughs> now I can, oh, it's not uh, publicity. <laughs> but it was kind of the first game that was yeah. completely controlled by reinforcement learning as opponents, right? It was uh, interest in a very interesting project there, and the, it was trained like that. Like the motorcycles learn how to to drive initially randomly, and then they learn that they weren't getting a great reward, which was like related to how, how much time it took to go through a certain piece of the track. And then uh, they actually yeah. learned to, how to, to, to drive, since the physics is the physics, to drive the way professional drivers drive because they need to optimize given uh-huh. the physics, right? So it was very, very yeah, interesting. Yeah. And wow. That's this super technique, cool. Yeah, it's, it was pretty cool. So this, this technique... Uh, can not only be used to, to control players like that, but ultimately, if you distill it down to, okay, instead of approximating a function, I'm pr- approximating a probability distribution, and this process mm-hmm. is actually yeah. differentiable, so I can backpropagate to it, so I can train it, even though the actions themselves are not necessarily uh, amenable to backpropagation. So you can actually simulate... Uh, in a, in a chain where you have a model and then you have an operation that yeah. is not really differentiable, you can use the reinforce, sorry. <laughs> uh, you can use reinforcement learning uh, to go through that part of the process and optimize yeah. something that can, is hard to I, express. Yep. Can I, uh, so just to make sure I've got it clear on my end. Um, so, so far in, in the, limited number of neural network t- tutorials that I've created so far. We have a neural network and mm-hmm. for example, at the end of that neural network, we might have like, um, what is it? A soft max, a soft max thing that turns the outputs into kind of pseudo probabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and w- the way we've been using those so far is, is we just what whichever one has, the highest probability is the one that we, we always choose that. And and what you're saying is instead of always choosing that and then making the next action, you just choose that action with that given probability. But there's a possibility that, that some of the times you're going to choose the other options. And as a result, you get a sort of a more, uh, you know, given the fact that, um, the input data isn't always going to be the exact same as your training data. Sometimes make taking those other options is actually going to uh, give you a better reward in the long term. Maybe not most of the time. So most of the time you want to focus on the thing with the highest probability. Um, but every now and then you want to have the flexibility to do these, these lower probability options, choose those. And, and that results in, artificial sort of motorcycle drivers that can drive more like people can, uh, because they've got, they've got wiggle room and they don't always just take, uh, the most, the, you know, the option with the highest probability they, yeah. they can sometimes do, they can sometimes surprise you even by like doing something that's like unusual or rare. Um, they don't do it all the time. Otherwise it would become, you know, commonplace and it would lose whatever specialness. Uh, but that's what you, I think that's what you, what you're saying is that is that yeah. sort of in the that's, ballpark? That's that's a piece of what I'm saying. Okay, and this is like the exploitation yeah. exploration trade off of uh, reinforcement learning agents, where they might take mm-hmm. uh, unusual decisions at some point, but that allows them to explore the solution space, let's say, and so they they find mm-hmm. creative ways of doing things. I remember when I was uh, doing that project, at some point the physics had a had a bug where uh, 
mm-hmm. if the the wheel touched the edge of the of the track in a very specific point mm-hmm. the the motorcycle will be mm-hmm. like sh- shot ahead <laughs> and of course okay. the agents <laughs> learn how to 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 do that systematically so um so and, awesome. but they did that by exp- because that that point was not a point where they were supposed to go in order to yeah. optimize their their trajectories yeah. But through exploration, yeah. they ended up there, and then they learned uh, to do that. Uh, but the um, yeah. the the other piece that makes reinforcement learning compelling he, in this case is that you can take an a, an action at some point that will have some effect in the future. And you've said that b- before, right? Um, and w- at the moment where you're taking the action, uh, it's not clear what the future uh, reward will be. And same thing with generative models. In this case, um, you're you're outputting a series of things, and then there will be somebody who will rank uh, for for the motorcycle. It was like how much time? Like, did you win? Did you win in the end? <laughs> yeah. Or uh, were yeah, you yeah, faster yeah. than your opponents? Or were you, were you very fast? Yeah. Um, and yeah. In in the other case, it's like. Uh, 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 their the output of of the model are ranked. Uh, you, you can say, okay, I'm I'm sampling my model and I'm getting ten outputs, and I want these outputs to be ranked for, from best to worst uh, in terms of human feedback for for that. And then, um, so each and every word generation is then uh, contextualized in uh, in terms of what was the reward in the end, right? And so this is how mm-hmm. the, the fine-tuning of the model is. In, and in this case, yeah, for ChatGPT, for example, uh, reinforcement learning was driven by human feedback in the sense that there's an intermediate point. And this is really important to, uh-huh. to introduce today because we also want to talk about all the other ingredients that are come and, and make an AI system, a modern AI system, behave the way it's behaving. The other piece is... It's not that the the fine tuning necessarily. So this reinforcement learning uh, had the human in the loop at, the, at every point in time. So it's not that I'm asking, uh, you know, ten different sentences. I rank them from first uh, best to worst, and this is the signal that goes into the model because it would take like me years and or hundreds of years to do that. Right? We need something else, which is how can we have uh, a mathematical function that given 10 sentences will give me the, the best to, to last, right? And this mathematical function, mm-hmm. as you can yeah. imagine, it's either something I code, and in this case of the motorcycles, I coded it because, you know, I, I knew that if you get there faster, I can write a formula for what getting there faster is or uh, having the best trajectory is and so on. In this case, it's much harder to do. But we have language models. So what you can do is say, okay, I'm now ranking a few thousands of sentences that have been sampled from my model, and I'm training another model to so that it can rank them in the future. It can rank yes. unseen, yes. unseen uh, sentences in the future. Um, and this is what happens. So this is called the reward model. So in traditional reinforcement mm-hmm. learning, you have the reward function. Here you have the reward function, which is a model itself. And so once you train the reward okay. model, then you can use that reward model to do something that is called align the other model. So what do we mean by align is, okay. you know, there's yeah. this trade-off between capability and alignment. Capability is how well do I predict my next word? Alignment is... Uh-huh. I don't care about predicting the next word exactly like it's, like it's written in the book. I want the model to do something that I mean it to do or not do something that I, want, I don't want it to do. So align it with my expectations in a very soft sense, right? Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. this is called like alignment. So I, how I can take something that is potentially harmful, toxic, whatever, and, and say, okay, now it's safe to use beyond its like immediate capability of predicting the next word, which is kind of like low level that I, I know it can do. Yeah. And, um, and so using a model that doesn't need to be the same model, it can be another model, uh, and use it in a reinforcement learning scheme to generate the reward 
so that I can apply, uh, uh, it's called usually, uh, you use uh, proximal policy optimization, which is one of the classical, now classical ways of uh, optimizing these probability distributions so that the reward function is maximized. Um, so th this process is very compelling to me because on one end, imagine you have this very capable, r reckless model, right? That you need to align yeah. properly. And here you have a yeah, curated yeah. reward model that with the right technique is capable of al to align the first one. Now think about the potential yeah. And there was a tweet this week um, that said, uh, I need to look up uh, the author, but it said, like, it would be great at this point if, that if OpenAI released their safety models and probably also the reward mm, models mm -hmm. because there's so much value here, right? So you can think about in yeah, the yeah. future, this uh, pre-trained huge models needing to be aligned, being published in some shape yeah. or form, and then me coming in and saying, okay, now I need really this to have cert certain behaviors and being able to like put my effort in that model that is usually smaller because it's not as hard you know, yeah. uh, to rank compared to actually generate and reason. Uh, so they're kind of dumper model in a way. Uh, uh -huh. But can, there can be a uh, where, where the difference uh, is made. Um, and and so this is the other piece. Well, this so, this yeah. This sounds like a really big deal to me uh, because um, in the, and and this wasn't. I mean, we're just talking a couple of months ago. <laughs> um, you know, when a company would re they'd be like, "Hey, we've got this new AI. You know, it's going to generate scholarly sounding articles." Or you can say, "Hey, write an article about, you know, I don't know, geology and." some era right and it would and it would create this thing it would have citations it would sound it would look like a normal article but it was all it was like within like 20 minutes of that thing being online and i'm being a little facetious but within about 20 yeah, minutes yeah. of this you know it was creating really nasty articles it was it that sounded scholarly it was you know yeah. all this racist stuff was coming out of it and i feel like that's that was a that was the fate of any AI. Like I mean, there you know I remember there was you know chatbots that like major companies were like, hey, we've got a cool new AI chatbot, and and it would be like within seconds, you know, just turned into something that's spitting out profanities and yep. had a really just foul output. And what you were saying is that even though two months ago people weren't doing that, now we can. Now we can filter that stuff out, and now we have some safeguards that um, even two months ago we did. I mean, maybe we had them, but no, in a we limited did. We sense. Did. Yeah, but now we now yeah. it's up to whoever uh, releases. Now model these safeguards are here, and we <laughs> yeah. don't have to. Yeah, we don't have to worry about AI just being completely um, uh, overtaken by like jokers and people who just want to make. You just think it's a big joke that problem of people abusing the system what you're saying is 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 that that may be going away and and we've got more safeguards in place than we used to it's which yeah, to me I, sounds I'm not like sure a huge, it's going that's a huge away. transition yeah yeah no we have a way yeah. to make it go away um and i want yeah. to talk about what anthropic is doing as well uh there because it's okay. uh, constitutional ai is kind of the uh, an interesting thing to talk about but yeah. the um, I would say that uh, it's it's not that it's going away, but it's the thing, right? <laughs> it's what makes uh, yeah uh, will make the difference between like if ChatGPT wasn't trained like that, then n using ChatGPT would be like impossible, right? So it would would, would be it'd, shocking. It'd be a nightmare, right? right? We, it would, would be a nightmare. It wouldn't yeah. have taken uh, yeah. uh, steam, and so because like. There are many yeah. humans who enjoy these things, but most people, uh, you know, they find it yeah. useful because they don't have these things in the way, right? Uh, and so that's right. The that's safety right. filters that you can put after it, and the and the reward models that you can train on that have elements of safety and alignment to a purpose, mm -hmm. 
these are what makes a super highly capable and potentially very evil because the data we feed it with is contains evil um, yes. into something that changes uh, the that impacts the ability of be, humanity to, to evolve, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll mm -hmm. be criticized, yeah, sure. but I think we are at the cusp of something that is really <laughs> compelling. And I'm not talking about ChatGPT again. Like, I'm not a ChatGPT yeah. fanboy. I'm, I'm just saying that <laughs> what, what we have right yeah. now in front of us is a recipe, right? Is the fact that... Yes. And I think what why OpenAI has credit here, and I'm fully aware that media, some other institutions with similar fire, firepower um, have created models that are uh, comparably good there. Uh, so I'm not making it uh, an open AI thing. It's more like mm -hmm. what we have understood is that in a rather minimalistic way, uh, we have a way to produce something that goes well, well beyond the capabilities of yeah. whoever is training it. Like, like it's, yes. so, uh, uh, in a way, I would say that uh, having the recipe, if, if the recipe said, okay, you need to sit with 10 experts, 10 geniuses, and for two years, <laughs> they're coding up yeah. rules and That's do right. stuff like that. Then, I mean, for example, um, I was... When I, I, when I was gonna reading get, that blog post... You're not going to get post, very far if you do it that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't like... Yes, you can do it. You can pull it up once. But humanity as a whole yeah. is... Like, for example, Mathematica, right? Wolfram's system, Alpha yeah. and so on. It's a marvel. It's really impressive. But there's one of them, you know? And yes. could have... Yeah. Could ha have it changed the world? Possibly for in, from some angles, but he hasn't ultimately, right? Maybe with, when coupled with other things, it, it will make a more of a contribution. But I don't think it it could trigger the butterfly effect of being, you know, the the the, the hive mind potential that these techniques yeah. have because they are attainable, because they are ultimately simple techniques that yes may require a lot of money today to get there. Uh, but it's not insane. Like, if you can fit, and Deli Brow um, was uh, tweeting about fitting um, uh, one of these uh, uh, models, I, I believe it was GLM, 130 billion. Uh, and he has a rig with four GPUs in his house, and he quantized it to int fours. And it actually made it run on a single machine. Now, it's not that you could run GPT-3 on the single machine with the same performance, <laughs> but actually, why not? Like, at some point, you know, yeah. this thing has 130 uh, billion parameters. GPT-3 has 175, I think. Um, so... Okay, so it's in the ballpark. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm not saying yeah. that, yeah, we'll have it in our smartwatches anytime soon, but... I'm just saying that, yes, it still takes 10 millions and, um, and a year to train, but this is going to be temporary. So the, 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 yeah. the more important thing is that now we have a recipe to create something that behaves yeah. like that. And that, that is yes. the fundamental thing that creates opportunities for people that will have products built directly on top of something like that. And we have seen it. Um, there are many yes. people who are being very yeah. creative with that. Um, and we'll talk about it at some point. Uh, for people that want to create a, a foundation yeah. model, you know, their own foundation model, <laughs> good luck with that, but that's fine. Like, it's possible, right? Uh, we've seen it in, in, uh, yes. in, in many examples and uh, there's GLM, OPT, uh, GPT Neo, Neo X, Bloom. You know, they're collectives and it's not a Manhattan project size thing at, anymore. It requires some money. 
but that's right. It's that, doable, right? It requires a little bit of money, but it's doable and it's reproducible and you can do it in a wide variety of contexts. And it's not just a one off. This is exactly, you know, what we're seeing is just sort of the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to see. Exactly. Whereas before, anytime we saw something that was amazing, it was that's all it was. It, I mean, it, it exactly. was amazing, but it, you know, you didn't then see it scale and cover, you know, all kinds of different markets. And it didn't compose change we're about ultimately, to right? It didn't compose. That's right. Oh, that's true. Right. So because yeah. composition is yeah. what makes, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the effect yeah. of something be multiplied, uh, you know, exponentially if you want. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And ultimately, you know, we're we're working at Lightning, so we know that uh, <laughs> our job is yeah. to remove the boilerplate um, and yeah. create what and to make it coming. easy to scale exactly and enable things yeah. and get, without all the technicalities, without having you know troops of platform engineers and so on, uh, but focus on what it is exactly. and what it is in this case is very small. So our job will be done yeah. in this case where we can express yeah. the whole thing we've described in a couple of files and let the platform yeah. take over, right? And enable yes, people exactly. to think high level. Now, that thing is not my problem yeah. anymore. Uh, my car, you know, I don't <laughs> care what, yeah. what, what the engine is doing or I can care if I'm curious, but it will still take me where I, where yeah. I need, to, need to take. So having a recipe now, exactly. it's... It's like I think it's uh, and and the recipe being being simple ultimately right? at the at the core simple is what really uh, makes this uh, 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 groundbreaking. <laughs>